The Automatic was a self-propelled anti-aircraft system developed privately by the Italian Otomelara company in collaboration with Otto Breda. The name Automatic is actually that of the anti-aircraft turret armed with a powerful 76mm cannon. The turret could be mounted on a modified OF-40 tank or a standard Leopard 1A2 MBT hull the first produced by Otto Melara and the second produced under license and used by the Italian army. It was developed as a heavy self-propelled anti-aircraft gun for use in armored divisions. The name is the acronym of Otto Main Anti-Aircraft Tank for Intercept and Combat. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article covering this love and bane of all War Thunder players. If you like our content and our channel, please do click the like button, subscribe and hit that bell button. We have a lot of videos coming up and we are really sure that you will love them. The Automatic project was developed by many factories. Otomelara was responsible for the design and the construction of the prototypes. The main partners of the project were Iveco Defense Vehicles, part of Iveco Fiat, Officine Galileo, Otto Breda, and Maritimo Aerospa. Otomelara, being a private company, designed the vehicle for the international market, but also offered it to the Esercito Italiano, the Italian army. The decision to mount the turret on the Palmaria self-propelled gun chassis, a modified version of the OF-40, was not a coincidence. This SPG, produced by Otomelara in collaboration with Fiat Iveco, did not have great international success. And, therefore, it was hoped that creating an entire family of armored vehicles with a common hull would increase the interest of foreign armies. In 1981, the program was presented for the first time at the Paris Air Show. Between 1981 and 1985, the first prototype was produced and tested, and was presented at the Paris Air Show in 1987. In the same year, the second prototype was produced, which was tested until 1989. In 1979, in order to outperform the German Flakpanzer Gepard and the British Marksman, the latter produced by Marconi, another Italian private company, auto technicians decided to mount the HEFAS 76 turret on the hull of the Otto Fiat Palmaria self-propelled gun. This turret was made of welded steel 25mm thick on all sides and 15mm on the roof. It weighed 15 tons and was armed with a prototype version of the Canone 76-62 Otto Breda Super Rapido naval gun which, at the time, was only a project. The cannon went into production in 1988. The problem with modern mobile armored anti-aircraft systems are its armament, which usually consists of multiple guns of a caliber between 20 and 35 millimeters. The biggest downside of these weapons is regarding long-range accuracy and the massive consumption of ammunition needed to take down an aerial target. The Automatic was designed primarily to shoot down enemy helicopters and planes before they had a chance to launch their air-to-ground missiles or anti-tank guided missiles from a distance of more than 3 or 4 kilometers. While the Gepard, armed with two 35mm guns, had a 3.5km effective range, the automatic could fire its 5 to 6 kilogram heavy shells to ranges of 6 or 7 kilometers. In addition to being quite precise even at the distance, a single shot could be lethal to any target, even if it did not directly hit it, thanks to the VTPA FB76 proximity fuse produced in France. The automatic could also be used in other roles in addition to its anti aircraft purpose. Its cannon, being designed for naval use, could be used for coastal defense against lighter targets. The wide range of ammunition that could be fired from the cannon also allowed it to be used for infantry support and even to engage enemy armored fighting vehicles. In fact, the availability of armored piercing rounds made it possible to destroy armored vehicles and armored personnel carriers, and even deal with IFVs and MBTs in certain situations. However, as it had the same whole armor of the OF-40 Mark II and Leopard 1, which were very light and vulnerable in comparison to other MBTs of the time, 
with a frontal thickness of the hull of only 70mm while the turret reached only 25mm, the automatic was itself vulnerable to anything larger than a heavy machine gun, and generally would have had to stay out of range of enemy AFVs. At the time it was designed, produced and tested between 1979 and 1991, it had the most powerful armament of any SPAAGs available in the world. Its light armor allowed the automatic to retain good mobility and speed, as it could reach a speed of 65 km per hour when mounted on the Palmaria chassis and 60 km an hour on the Leopard 1 chassis. Unfortunately, in 1991, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, such an expensive self-propelled vehicle was no longer of utmost priority for the armies of the world. Even the Italian army which had shown great interest in this powerful vehicle could no longer finance the project due to cuts in the military budget after the collapse of the Soviet Union. The automatic remained on the international market until 1997, when Otto scrapped the prototype on the Palmaria hull and put the second one in a warehouse to rust. In 2019, when it was thought that the second vehicle had also been scrapped, the prototype using the Leopard hull reappeared completely restored and in working order. Otto will exhibit it in its new museum at La Spezia, near the company's headquarters. Between 2005 and 2013, Otto Melara, now called Leonardo Finmeccanica, designed a new anti-aircraft turret armed with a 76mm cannon, giving birth to the Draco, the automatic's successor. The automatic had two radars designed and produced for this vehicle by Galileo Avionica SPA, now Celex ES, which had two separate tasks. The first radar was used for target acquisition, and it was the SMA VPS-A05, which could not track targets alone. During transport, the radars could be lowered to reduce the height of the vehicle. The VPS-A05 had a minimum range of 500 meters and maximum of 20 kilometers against any type of aircraft, traveling at a minimum speed of 36 kilometers per hour and a maximum of 3,600 kilometers per hour, a 360 degree radio, and could track 24 targets at a time. In the early 1980s, the Israelis developed an anti-radar missile system mounted on armored vehicles, with the task of hitting the radar of surface-to-air missile batteries. In order to counter this, the automatic's radars were designed to operate at low power, reducing the risk that it would be engaged by anti-radiation missiles and the pulse Doppler system. The second radar used for target tracking was the SMA VPG A06 in the KA band, which could not acquire targets alone but could trace them and position them on the radar displays of the gunner and vehicle commander. Its tracking range was 180 degrees, its minimum tracking radius was 75 meters, while the maximum range against planes and helicopters was 20 kilometers. The minimum engagement speed was 54 km per hour while the maximum was 3600 km per hour. The radar was very precise being able to identify the position of a 2 meter sized target at a distance of 10 km and trace it without any problems with an elevation of minus 5 to plus 80 degrees. The automatic crew consisted of 4 soldiers. The driver placed on the right side of the hull had a hatch identical to that on the OF-40 and free VO-IL-186 episcopes. The other crew members were placed in the giant turret. On the left, next to a side door and below a hatch equipped with two periscopes, was the gun loader. In the center behind the gun breech and the loading system was the gunner with his fixed periscopic detector. Finally, the vehicle commander on the right had a side door identical to the one used by the loader and was equipped with a two-axis stabilized periscope that could be operated from the inside with a joystick and with a 360 degree field of view to monitor the battlefield without having to leave the vehicle. The gunner was equipped with a sighting screen using the electro-optical sight mounted next to the gun and equipped with two joysticks, one to rotate the turret and the other to maneuver the VPG-A06 radar. The tank commander was equipped with a color screen with radar mapping and images of the panoramic telescope as well as two joysticks, one to maneuver the periscope and the second to move the turret, 
the cannon and open fire in the remote case the gunner is no longer able to do his tasks. The cannon of the Otto main anti-aircraft tank for intercept and combat was the Canone 76-62 Super Rapido Otto Breda, sometimes mistakenly called Otto Breda, with a firing rate of 120 rounds per minute. At the request of the buyer, this could have been replaced with the version of the cannon called Canone 76-62 Compato, compact, with the firing rate reduced to 85 rounds per minute. The cannon had an elevation of minus 5 to plus 60 degrees and was stabilized on two axes to allow it to fire even on the move. A large smoke extractor was placed in the middle of the barrel to prevent the gases generated from firing from entering the combat chamber and intoxicating the crew. Its maximum range was 20 km against land and naval targets and 9 km theoretically against air targets. The practical anti-aircraft range was 6 to 7 km, since the vehicle needed time to identify and aim at the target before opening fire. From the moment the airborne target entered the radar range, the automatic could shoot it down within a maximum of 6 seconds. The vehicle was also equipped with 8 Wegmann Krauss Maffei 76mm smoke launchers, 4 on each side of the turret, and with a machine gun pedestal, probably for a Beretta MG42-59 7.62x51mm NATO mounted on the hatch of the commander. The muzzle velocity of the projectiles was 910 meters per second for anti-aircraft ammunition and 1580 meters per second for anti-tank ammunition. In order to fulfill the many potential uses of this cannon, the 76mm Otto Breda gun can fire many types of ammunition. From semi-armor piercing high explosive incendiary and high explosive variable time for the anti-aircraft role, to armor piercing fin stabilized discarding Sabo, and multi-purpose anti-tank for the anti-tank role. This is in addition to the Dart, Davide, Siram, and the sub-calibrated Stralis ammunition that can destroy missiles traveling at any speed thanks to a beam of laser coordinates that, with Dart ammunition, can adjust the trajectory of the projectile even in flight, thanks to the stabilized canard fins. It is also possible to fire all NATO standard ammunition, such as the DM-231 armor piercing, DM-241 high explosive and DM-248 target practice shells. The amount of ammunition on board is 100 rounds. 25 rounds are in the ready to use automatic loader and in the turret basket. Another 45 are in the turret rear and 30 in the hull. The automatic loader is equipped with two revolver type rotating cylinders, both with 12 rounds, that allow the cannon to fire all the rounds of a cylinder in just 6 seconds in the super rapid version and 8.6 seconds in the compact version. However, when the cylinder is empty, the loader has to reload it manually, taking a long time. However, it was common practice to fire 5 or 6 round bursts during tests to avoid excessive ammunition consumption and not to overheat the barrel. The fire control system was a modified and improved version of the Lince, an FCS produced by Otto Breda used on the ships of the Marina Militare Italiana, and by ships of other navies that use the 76mm Otto Breda system. Tests have shown that it is able to open fire in any weather conditions and even when the vehicle is moving at low speeds on rough terrain or when the enemy uses heavy electronic countermeasures. The identification friend or foe system used on military aircraft was also integrated into the FCS, which informs the crew if the aircraft locked by the radar is friendly or belongs to the enemy. It is produced by the Italian company Italtel. Officine Galileo, as an all Italian armored vehicles, had designed the coaxial electro-optical vision optics and the telemetric laser that was used by the gunner if he had to engage ground targets without the use of radars like a normal tank. The onboard computer was probably an early version of the Turm's OG-I4L3 mounted on the Italian MBT C1 Ariete and on the B1 Centauro wheel tank destroyer a few years later. This had been enhanced in some of its electronic components to follow, calculate and engage 20 targets simultaneously and independently. 
The FCS was also gyro-stabilized, allowing it to have the same orientation as the cannon even when the vehicle drove through rough terrain. The Hefas 76 turret was mounted, on the first prototype, on the hull of the Palmaria self-propelled gun built by Iveco Fiat and the Otomelara Otobreta Consortium. This hull was derived from the OF-40. The tank was the first designed by Italy after 1945 without foreign help, of which only 39 vehicles were produced between 1980 and 1985. It was purchased only by the United Arab Emirates Army and is still used after 34 years of service. 235 of the SPG version were built from 1982 onwards along with 25 single turrets. 210 were ordered by Libya, 25 by Nigeria and 25 turrets were sold to Argentina, which mounted them on the Tanque Argentino Mediano, creating the Vehículo de Combate de Artilleria. The OF-40 was very similar to the Leopard 1 because Otto bought the blueprints of the German MBT and produced its own licensed version of the Leopard 1A2 for the Italian Army, also called Leopard in Italy but nicknamed Leopardino. The OF-40 was a vehicle developed using the Leopard 1 as a base but designed for export, especially for Middle Eastern armies, with an armored vehicle of similar capabilities but cheaper than the Leopard. The hull was made of welded steel with a front thickness of 70mm and the side thickness of 25mm. The wheels, suspension and tracks were identical to those of the Leopard but produced by Italian companies with 15mm thick protective skirts. The engine of the Automatic was a licensed copy of the MTU MB838 CAM500, a 10-cylinder engine with a maximum power of 830 horsepower. 1,000 litres of diesel was stored in two 500-litre tanks in the engine compartment sides. It was capable of giving the automatic a 500km range on roads and a speed of 65km per hour. The Palmaria hull was squarer than the chassis of the OF-40 and re-motorized with a 750 horsepower engine of German origin and two 400-litre tanks. The hull of the OF-40 was taken into consideration but, for unknown reasons, it was preferred to use the re-engined Palmaria hull. The Leopard 1A2, on the other hand, was produced by the German company Krauss Maffei between 1965 and 1984. 4,700 of the MBT version were purchased by armies around the world due to its reliability and firepower, which made it one of the best NATO tanks of the time. Its hull was produced with welded steel with the same armor thickness as those on the OF-40. The engine and fuel tanks were the same. However, the maximum speed with the Hefas 76-L1 turret was reduced from 80 to 60 km per hour. The gearbox was the Model 4 HP-250 gearbox with four forward and two reverse gear ratios, produced by the German factory Zahnrad Fabrik Friedrich Schaffen. The gear selection mechanism was electrohydraulic. The Leopard 1 was fitted with a trailing arm torsion bar suspension system. The first three and last two road wheels on each side of the vehicle were provided with dual action hydraulic shock dampers. Seven double road wheels with rubber tires were mounted on each side of the German MBT. The Leopard 1 based version of the automatic was proposed to the German army, but the Germans were not interested in replacing their flak Panzer Gepards. In the early 90s, a version of the automatic based on the chassis of the American M60 Patton main battle tank was designed, but it was quickly abandoned. It should be noted that the version of the automatic based on the Leopard chassis differs from the OF-41 by the lack of side skirts, which were never mounted on the Leopard based prototype. The rounds for the cannon that were positioned in the hull were stored in the frontal part, immediately before the gearbox to the left of the driver. The compact design of the 76mm cannon automatic loader on the Hefas turret served as the basis for the design of a new naval turret for the auto cannon. This version held 80 rounds in the autoloader cylinder instead of 50. In addition, the cannon was used to design the new Draco ground turret, more compact and lighter than the automatic system. This turret, also armed with a 7.62mm or 12.7mm coaxial Beretta MG42-59 or Browning M2HB machine gun, could be used for four different roles. 
anti-air, anti-missile against ground targets or against naval targets. Thanks to the new Dart, Davide and Stralis ammunition, which incorporate the new NA-25X radar and the updated Dardo-F shooting computers, the cannon can also lock on and eliminate air-to-ground missiles. Thanks to its lightness, the new Draco turret can be mounted on armored car hulls, 8x8 trucks or tanks and also has a fixed turret on a static emplacement. In 2013, a Draco was mounted on the hull of the Italian B1 Centauro 8x8 tank destroyer. 36 rounds of ammunition can be stored on board in the automatic loader, plus another 24 rounds in the rear turret racks. On larger vehicles or in bunkers, the amount of ammunition can be increased to 36 or 50 rounds in the automatic revolver type loader. In recent years, Otto Breda, now called Leonardo Finmeccanica, has been planning a fully automatic loader for naval use. This has the purpose of removing the need for some crew members to be in proximity of the cannon and ammunition. It is probable that as soon as this is developed in a new system, Otto will make it suitable for use on armored vehicles. Today, the automatic is an obsolete project. The heavy turret needs an expensive and heavy MBT hull to transport it. The range of the cannon greater than that of any other cannon mounted on a mobile anti-aircraft system when it was first released and its precision at long distances is now equaled and in some cases surpassed by short-range anti-aircraft missiles now available, such as the air defense anti-tank system. The automatic has heavy armor for a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun which protects it from light infantry weapons but it is not comparable to that of the battle tanks to which it must offer protection even on the front line. Its turret is very tall and its radars cannot be lowered or hidden inside. Helicopter and airplane carried anti-tank missiles such as the Russian 9K114 Sturm are capable of exceeding the 76mm cannon in range. Its performance against flying targets at ranges of up to 6 km can today also be reached by missile systems transportable on 10-ton vehicles. The automatic, which is heavy and expensive, is no longer appealing to modern militaries compared to the competition. The failure of the vehicle can also be considered from another perspective. The Soviets had also thought of putting into service a similar SPAG a vehicle based on a tank hull armed with the AK-176 76.2mm naval gun and with an adjustable firing rate of 30, 60 or 120 rounds per minute. The Soviets developed this gun for the Navy before Otto Breda in 1979. However, they preferred a mixed system with two 30mm light cannons and eight 9M331 missiles, which led to the 2S6 Tunguska. This entered service with the Soviet Army in 1988 and is still in service as of 2020. In 1983, the prototype using the Palmaria hull was presented to the Italian Army which showed interest, requesting and perhaps financing another prototype on the Leopard 1 hull. This MBT was, at the time, the predominant tank of the Italian Armored Divisions but, due to the high cost of designing, building and converting the new SPAGs, an expected order for 80 automatics was cancelled. About 472 million US dollars were invested to buy 275 vehicles of the CDAM 25 type, also designed by Otto Melara based on an M113 armed with four 25mm cannons. Immediately after the cancellation, Otto tried to modify the vehicle by designing an automatic armed with twin Ehrlichen 35 or 40mm cannons without modifying the turret or hull, but the Italian army refused the offer. In the late 90s, an anti-aircraft self-propelled gun was even created based on the hull of the Leopard 1 tank and armed with a 40-70 Bofors cannon, but it was realized that it was not a good solution. Even if the project was as innovative as it was promised, with only two crewmen placed in the hull and a state-of-the-art automatic loading system, the project was already closed in 1997 in favor of missile systems and the SIDAM-25. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular.
You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.